welcome to the SVG TV News for Thursday, October 17th. I am Khalil Cato with the details. General Secretary of the Commercial, Technical and Allied Workers Union, Joseph Burns Bonnady, said that he is pleased and satisfied with the settlement reached for the outstanding overtime payments for Scotiabank workers here in SVG. The staff members are to receive their payments owed for the last six years tomorrow. Very much so. And um, we, we came to uh, a good agreement. And of course, the way I operate, um, prior to agreeing to what the bank would have proposed, I would have had to put it to the employees. I could tell you is that those persons who were employed with the Bank of Nova Scotia and would have retired, all of those persons will be in the, um, would be paid. Uh, the bank would be calling those individuals who would have exited the bank um, to include them. It would be over 30 plus persons who would be in the bargaining unit and you have to add now those who would have retired and um, having worked to the age of retirement, they too would be entitled. Republic Bank Holdings Limited is expected to take over the operations of Scotiabank SVG at the end of this month and according to Bonnady, all staff have been retained, which was part of the agreement, and they are now being prepared for new management. And um, we, we had already discussed prior to that the change of uniforms and that sort of thing for the staff. And we had agreed previously with the bank that all employees who are presently employed will continue to work with the, the, um, the new bank. And we had a meeting with officials from the new bank. Uh, I had the meeting with the shop stewards and, and the representatives of the workers, and they um, reaffirmed and confirmed that arrangement is in place. Bonnady said negotiations are, however, ongoing on behalf of some staff who left the bank after the announcement of the sale of Scotia Bank. For other, all sorts of reasons, people might get another job. Um, people might want to have migrated from St. Vincent elsewhere. Some people went to study and they would have resigned from the bank. So I am in discussion with the bank on those matters um, because it is my understanding that some of those persons have not yet been called by the bank. Um, but I know that some retirees have already been called, so the bank would have to notify those individuals. The National Mediation Committee is hosting a week of activities to promote court-connected mediation in the state. One of the activities was a lecture hosted last evening at the French's House on the topic, In the Middle of Difficulty Lies Opportunity. Justice of Appeal Gretel Thom said that St. Vincent and the Grenadines is the only Eastern Caribbean country that has an extensive awareness program on mediation, which is laudable and timely. Fortunately, it has not been as successful as we at the court had hoped it would be. And so we decided we needed to make a fresh start. And we started with St. Vincent and the Grenadines because St. Vincent and the Grenadines was one of those jurisdictions that the numbers, when we looked at the numbers of successful mediation sessions, St. Vincent was not really high up on the, the list. And so mediation was one of those jurisdictions that we, St. Vincent and the Grenadines was one of those jurisdictions we think we needed to target. And I must say, so far, everything has been working perfectly in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Regional Mediation Coordinator Francis Compton, who has decades of experience in mediation, delivered the lecture last evening. He outlined the importance of mediation and said more can be done for mediation and mediators locally. Having a meeting like this is not something new. We have tried. For instance, we were hoping, I came here um, sometime last year, and the intention was to do a refresher training program. But, and I had a list of the persons who were expecting to, were expected to attend that refresher training program. And two of us came from St. Lucia to, to conduct the two-day program. It was very, very poorly attended. I can also tell you 
that we have discovered that it ought to be useful for mediators and lawyers to meet together as a group from time to time. The Regional Mediation Coordinator also spoke on the issue of having more suitable accommodations for mediation across the Eastern Caribbean countries, including here in SVG. We have a problem in St. Vincent with adequate space to house and to hold mediation sessions. It's uncomfortable for the lawyers who come there, it's uncomfortable to the parties who come. But this is what we have and we have to do with it what we can. Recently I visited St. Vincent again. I think I was on my own business. I came here on a holiday. And I actually visited the mediation room. Now it's not your fault or my fault or anybody's fault. It's a general malaise we have in the OECS or in the Caribbean. And I visited three rooms and I suggested one of them could be better suited for mediation because of size, this, that, and the other, and so on. So that we would make the room, refresh the room. The room has electricity, it has air conditioning, but it's cluttered. And it's a question of getting a couple prisoners. I don't know if they still do that in St. Vincent. Or some people pay a couple of dollars a day to get two laborers to come and clear the place. It doesn't need to be repainted or anything like this, but the clutter to remove it. Meanwhile, a mediation and legal aid clinic was held today for members of the public who are being encouraged to consider mediation for, first to settle their differences in any matter that is already before the court. As we hear in this report by Larissa Pugsley Kidd, mediation not only increases the control the parties have over the resolution, but it is also considered confidential and cost effective. The persons took advantage of the mediation clinic and legal aid today hosted by the SVG National Mediation Committee at the Old Library Compound in Capital Kingstown as part of the week-long activities to promote court-connected mediation in the country. Today's activity was a collaborative initiative with the SVG Bar Association. President of the SVG Bar Association, René Batiste, said that the activity afforded many persons free legal advice and referrals. There are lawyers who are here to give legal advice to individuals. It's it is complimentary, it's free, it's pro bono, um, and also we are here with some mediators who will then be able to take some referrals for mediation. Now the, the mediation is in two types. You have court-appointed mediators, all of us are trained under the same program, we are all certified mediators, but there are those who applied and were appointed by the court as court-appointed mediators. Chairperson of the SVG National Mediation Committee, Justice Esco Henry, said mediation is usually the first option to resolve disputes as the process is less costly than a court trial with less time to get a hearing and a matter resolved. We're always happy to see persons being assisted with getting quick resolution to their disputes and along with that, the more informed persons are about their rights the better the society is because it engenders law and order and unless people know what their rights are, unless people know how to go about resolving disputes, then we would not have fulfilled our mandate as a, an administration of justice system. Mediation has been practiced in SVG for about 15 years now and according to Regional Mediation Coordinator of the OECS Supreme Court, Francis Compton, it has not been promoted and practiced as they would like it to be and they are hoping the awareness activities will help more persons choose mediation to settle disputes. But thousands of persons do not know about mediation and it would appear that many people are not concerned or don't care unless and until they find themselves in a position where they may need mediation services. A lot of people don't know about it. The lawyers don't seem to talk about it. But sometimes the lawyers seem to be coerced into having mediation sessions. But that's the factor of life we have to deal with throughout the OECS, not only St. Vincent. There are currently 28 court-connected mediators in the country. They were trained and certified to resolve disputes outside of the court. Reporting for SVG TV News, Larissa Pogsley, KID. Newly appointed rep resident representative of the United Nations Development Program for Barbados and the OECS, Magdi Martinez Soliman, said he is looking forward to increased cooperation between this country and the organization. 
On his first day visit to the state, Suleiman presented his credentials to Prime Minister Dr. Ralph Gonzales, followed by a meeting attended by members of the cabinet. The newly appointed UNDP resident representative was also engaged in various media outreaches, one of which was with SVG TV News. The UNDP is known for, grant, for providing grant funding in a range of areas, including to help build resilience against the impacts of climate change. Suleiman said advocacy and networking are some of the ways which they are able to achieve their objectives. Development finance so that they can afford to do what otherwise the budget would not permit them to do. Then we uh, also connect them with partners who are of the same opinion, who have the same values, and who would help them either through technical assistance, expertise, or again through a, a good practice to do what they what they would like to see happening. So there's many ways in which we uh, bring our ideas to, to, to come true. Um, I'd say that the most important is is the the the, the power of uh, the power of persuasion, the power of the good example that we have witnessed. That's why, because we are a network in the UN and we operate in about 150 countries, you always know about something interesting interesting that has happened elsewhere, elsewhere in the Caribbean, or elsewhere on the Latin American continent, or elsewhere somewhere in the world, perhaps in another small island state that has experienced a good way of doing things and in that way we feed back to the network what we have learned through the network and it's an interesting way to um, uh, uh, develop best practice and acquire uh, good lessons learned. Soliman said grant assistance is also available to local community-based organizations and NGOs and highlighted some of the requirements to access these funds. There is a program that exists in every single island of the Caribbean called the Small Grants Program, and it says it all. It's grants, but it's small. Small, but quite nice. And it supports uh, community-based organizations, NGOs, and civil society organizations that do that that have initiatives that have to do with climate, but at the same time with productive uh, uh, ideas that generate income. So it is about jobs, it is about small business, it is about ideas that need that little push of a, an investment capital, of a venture capital, of a risk uh, uh, push to, to, become, to become reality. And at the same time, they are managed by civil society organizations. So yes, the, the answer is a big yes. And there is a small grants program here in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. In recent times, several agencies, both locally and regionally, have put forward ideas designed to combat the effects of climate change. One of the ideas is the urban forest, put forward by the Forestry Department. Soliman said while cities in the Caribbean still possess more greenery than other places, the idea put forward by the Forestry Department is a good one certainly more pleasant. It gives, uh, if you want an economic argument, it gives value to the real estate. If you want a touristic argument, nobody wants to really walk in a polluted and dirty city full of concrete. They have that at home. What they want is to come to a quaint, well-looking uh, city center where, you know, the park follows the green area, follows the uh, tree-lined avenue, follows the um, uh, nice public building that you that you visit. So it is an asset from every point of view to have a greener city. And, and I think that is one of the uh, objectives of good city planning, good municipal and urban planning. And um, I am not sure we are the best at that. We have a sister agency called UN Habitat who is very specialized on that. But I do see that there is a revival and a, an intention and a push by uh, cities in the Caribbean to defend the way they used to be more of a pedestrian city, more of a city for the nice walk, uh, a city that uh, encourages the shopping area, the stroll in the park, and, and certainly a, a, a better quality of life. This country has the potential to be a major exporter of products from the medicinal cannabis industry, but hard, smart work must be done to seize the opportunity. That's according to Prime Minister Dr. Ralph Gonzales as he addressed yesterday's opening ceremony at the Vinci Agri Expo 2019 at the decommissioned E.T. Joshua Airport compound. The expo features all aspects of the local agriculture industry, including the medicinal, the medicinal Cannabis Authority, which is responsible for regulating the SVG medical cannabis industry. 
P.M. Gonzal said there is a wealth of experience, quality of water, and rich soil in SVG, which place the country at an advantage over others seeking to develop a medical cannabis industry. The Prime Minister, however, noted that local stakeholders must not rest on their laurels. He's Gaston, I say, Gaston. Oh, you know, we, we make their beer down here now. I say, but how you can make beer with diesel water? And you can't grow ganja just with diesel water. Well, I know they collect green water. But we are available to supply them. Supply Barbados with medical cannabis and supply Antigua with medical cannabis in addition to other places because we have a good history of growing it. Of course, they will try and nothing wrong for them to try to make a dollar. But you see why is it that we in St. Vincent and the Grenadines Saboto, we can't believe that because we have a history of growing it that we're going to make the dollar because other people want to make a dollar for it too. So you have to work hard and smart. Minister of Agriculture Saboto Caesar said the regional environment is constantly changing and local stakeholders have to keep up with these changes in order to take full advantages of the opportunities which will come when the SVG medical cannabis industry is fully developed. I was reflecting on one of my favorite songs that speaks about the changing scenes of life. I looked at the police, the members of the constabulary, one standing and one on his bike. I recognize the groans of the ones it is Joshua Airport. And right outside the door, I see persons wearing a uniform stating cannabis on it. Now, if that isn't a change in scene, because a few years ago, anybody associated with cannabis at the airport would have already been arrested by the police. And that is one example of some of the vagaries that we have to grapple with in the changing local, regional, and global environment as farmers and as policymakers. Since yesterday's opening ceremony of the Expo, persons have been taking the opportunity to examine many of the elements of the local agriculture industry. As the agriculture sector continues to evolve, many stakeholders, including farmers, have been utilizing various forms of technology to help improve their production and productivity. This is our turbidity meter. We measure the cloudiness of the water, that's what turbidity refers to. You may ask why turbidity? Turbidity is quite important because based on the cloudiness of the water, it, it impacts on the amount of light entering the, the water and also the amount of heat that is retained in the water. And more turbid the water is, more heat would be retained in the water. And once you have more heat, then it speeds up the chemical reaction in the water, hence causing different, different imbalances in terms of your water system. is one of my favorite. This is the Leaf Pack Stream Ecology Kit. This is basically done for investigating water and to look at whatever organisms may be present in your water system. So for example, we have mayflies, water beetles, chew flies, chew bugs, etc. So this is just depicting some of the organisms, macro and microorganisms that may be present in your water. Now the importance of this is that the presence or absence of an organism is indicative of the health of the water. So for example, if you have an abundance of a particular organism, let's say E. coli bacteria, then you know that there's um, a contamination of your water and maybe it may not be of acceptable standards. So this is one way we, we get to do it. And these are all the different apparatuses that we use to um, collect our organisms. For one in making uh, any sort of pellet, you can use your combination of forages that you have, but for our purposes, we use these three. Uh, with these, we add to it milfeed, which is a binding um, component. We also use molasses 
the molasses would be mixed with water. Basically, you combine these basic ingredients. You can also add things like um, vitamins, salt, um, even antibiotic if you so wish. The beauty about making your own feed is that you can formulate it. You can add whatever you think um, is needed for your specific animals, your specific purpose, and what have you. But basically, we have the three different forages that we have here. We mix it with mill feed, molasses. The molasses would be concentrated with water. Um, mix them together, and then we feed them through our pellet machine. Uh, they would enter here, and after a while, you get lovely pellet like this, which the animals do enjoy, and it's very nutritious. We promote you use a VHF radio or a GPS, which is much better. You can plot your course back to wherever you started. So the compass is a kind of more old-fashioned way of navigating. So we try to keep up with technology. That's why we're promoting the GPS. Um, as I say, you can plot your way forward and back with this. Could you also plot spots that you want to do? Let's say you want to fish in a particular area. It, you want can, to do. it can do that as well. It plots your different fishing grounds. For instance, if you go to this area and you find a lot of fish here and you want to go back there a couple days down the road, this would store that location. So you can find your way back easier. Unlike the compass, the compass just gives you the bearings like north, south, east, west. The GPS is more precise to give you latitude and longitude, like, like an exact location. And is the VHF2 has a feature that can notify Coast Guard in the event of distress or any rescue um, personnel on shore. It is called a GMDSS. 34 local teachers who have successfully completed their Bachelor of Education degree in the teaching of mathematics and language arts at the SVG Community College will be on the list of graduates when the University of the West Indies Cave Hill campus hosts its graduation ceremony this Saturday, October 19th. A news release from the Community College said 45 students began these franchised programs from the university in September 2016 and 42 wrote the final exam in May of this year. The college said it is very pleased that 34 teachers successfully completed their program in the specified time. Six of them received first-class honors in teaching of mathematics, 25 upper second-class honors, and three lower, lower second-class honors degrees. The college said it will continue to offer the franchise degree programs from the University of the West Indies, and this academic year, 52 teachers are pursuing studies in in the three-year part-time Bachelor of Education Special Needs Education Program. The college is also offering a Master's of Education program in collaboration with the School of Education at the UWI Cave Hill campus in three options, namely educational leadership, school counseling, and language and literacy. The current cohort of 33 teachers will conclude their studies in July of 2020, and a new cohort will be accepted in September.